Okay, so for this problem, we're talking about moments of inertia. So S is a solid region between two cylinders given by x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 and x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4. And between the two plates, planes, uh, z equals 0 and z equals 3. Now, we're supposing that an object of constant density and mass m occupies this region. So we want to calculate this object's moment of inertia about the z-axis. So let me draw it. So I have these two cylinders, or you could kind of think of it like a bead with a hollow middle part um, that's rotating like that. Just Okay. So let's recall how to find moment of inertia. I will write out the integral for you. Okay, so moment of inertia is given by a triple integral of r squared times density dv with respect to volume. Um, but here, r isn't just r like in polar, cylindrical, spherical coordinates. It's the distance to the axis of revolution. So lucky for us in this cylinder, since z is the axis of, ax the axis of revolution, the r in cylindrical coordinates and the r here are actually going to end up being the same thing which is great. So let's go ahead and set up this integral. All right, well, let's talk about density. We know that we have a constant density and an unknown mass m. But that means we can probably find the volume, right? Two cylinders shouldn't be that hard. Well, let's remember that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So the outer cylinder has a radius of 2. So I have height is 3. So 12 pi minus 3 pi for that cylinder in the middle we're missing, and we get volume to be 9 pi. So instead of having some density function, I'm going to pull density out and have it be m over 9 pi. Right. Give me a little room there. OK, now let's talk about this dv. This is a cylinder. So it would be really cool to inter integrate in cylindrical coordinates, right? So dv becomes r dr dz d theta. So I'm going to change this r squared to an r cubed. And now I just need to set up my bounds of integration. Well, theta is the easiest, right? Because the cylinder goes all the way around. So I'm going from 0 to 2 pi. And then z is also given to me because my cylinder is between two planes, z equals 0 and z equals 3. And then for r, I know that the radius of the inner cylinder is 1 and the radius of the outer cylinder is 2. So I'll integrate r from 1 to 2. OK. Let's go ahead and start by integrating with respect to r. Well, the integral of r cubed is going to be 1 fourth r to the fourth. I'm going to pull that 1 fourth out. Right? 4 times 9, 36. So now I want to evaluate r to the fourth from r equals 1 to r equals 2. So let's 
So that's going to be 2 to the 4th, which is 16, minus 1 to the 4th, which is 1. 16 minus 1, 15. Save a little room here. And I'm actually going to pull the 15 out, since it's just a constant. So now I'm just integrating dz, which will give me z. OK, so now I'm evaluating z from 0 to 3. Let me move over here and plug that in. Well, this should be easy to plug in, right? So z equals 3 gives me 3, and z equals 0 gives me nothing. So 15m over 36 pi, integral of 3 d theta. Let me go ahead and pull that 3 out. So I'm actually going to divide the denominator by 3 and make that a 12. Well, the integral of d theta is just theta. And I'm evaluating from 0 to 2 pi. So plug in 2 pi, it's itself, um, and then the 0 is nothing. So I am looking at 15m over 12 pi times 2 pi. Well, let me cancel my pi's out. Uh, I canceled the 2 and the 12, so now I have 15 over 6, divide by 3. And I get 5m over 2 as my moment of inertia for the cylinder about the z-axis. Now let's take a trip and find the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So about the y-axis is going to be a little bit harder because the r distance from the axis of rotation is not going to be the same as the r in cylindrical coordinates. So you could either try to switch the axis of the cylinder, think about it that way, or you could just suck it up and use something else for r, which is what we're going to do. But the integral is going to be set up the same way, same bounds and everything. So let me go ahead and copy that over. Okay, so now I need to think about what that r squared is. Now I'm looking for distance to the y-axis. Well, that's pretty easy. Distance to the y-axis is the square root of x squared plus z squared. So for this r squared I'm looking for, I'll just have x squared plus z squared. But I kind of like in integrating in cylindrical coordinates last time. And I am looking at a cylinder, so that's still the best way to do it. So let me convert this x and z into cylindrical coordinates. z actually stays the same, but x becomes r cosine theta. And now I just need to think about my dv. Like last time, it's going to become r dr dz d theta. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by r. So I have r cubed cosine squared theta plus z squared r. Now let's integrate with respect to r. Oh, bounds of integration would be nice, right? They're the same as last time. We're 
right? Because the cylinder that I'm integrating with respect to hasn't actually changed. Now let's integrate with respect to r. So tree cosine squared theta like a constant, r cubed is going to become 1 fourth r to the fourth. And z squared r is going to become 1 half r squared z squared. And I want to evaluate this from r equals 2 to r equals 1. Other way, r equals 1 to r equals 2. All right, let me plug in that 2 first. So 1 fourth, 2 to the fourth is 16 cosine squared theta. And 1 half times 4 z squared, 2 z squared. Now let's plug in r equals 1. Well, I'm just going to get 1 fourth cosine squared theta plus 1 half z squared. Let's go ahead and combine some of this. So the two cosine thetas, when I have, ooh, this is 4. That's not bad, right? 2 to the 4th is 16, times 1 fourth is 4. So 4 cosine squared theta minus 1 fourth cosine squared theta is going to give me 15 over 4. Just save a little space. And then I have 2z squared minus 1 half z squared, which gives me 3 halves z squared. Let's go ahead and integrate with respect to z. So 15 over 4 cosine squared theta is just like a constant. So when I integrate that, I'm going to get all of that times z. And then for 3 halves z squared, divide by 3, 1 half z to the third. And I want to evaluate that from z equals 0 to z equals 3. All right, let me move over here to evaluate that. So carry a lot of it over. So 15 over 4 times 3 gives me 45 fourths. And 1 half times 3 to the third gives me 27 halves. I plug in z equals 0, and I just get 0. So now all I have left to do is integrate with respect to theta. Well, this cosine squared looks a little uncomfortable because I don't actually have like a sign next to it to do a u substitution. But I can remember a trig identity that's really going to help us out here. So 
cosine squared theta is equivalent to one half plus one half cosine two theta. So I went ahead and distributed the 45 over four, but that's where this part came from. And now I can integrate. So d theta, 45 over eight is gonna be a constant. And then for 45 over eight cosine of two theta, I know that the integral of cosine theta is sine and that 45 over eight is just a constant. But I do have to do something about that two theta. This is kind of like a little u substitution, but I'm gonna kind of do it without that. So if I was taking the derivative of sine of two theta, I would get two cosine two theta. So when I'm integrating this, I need to divide by two. So I'm gonna change this to 45 over 16. And then 27 over two is also a constant. So I'm gonna get 27 halves theta. Okay. So now I want to evaluate. First, I'm going to plug in theta equals 2 pi. Back over here. I am running out of room. You guys memorized all these steps, right? So 45 over eight times two pi gives me 45 pi over four. And 45 over 16 times sine of four theta is actually gonna be zero, that sine of four pi, because sine of two pi, four pi, six pi, et cetera, is zero. So I don't have anything to write there. And then for 27 over two, I am going to multiply that by 2 pi, and I'm going to get 27 pi. Now let's plug in theta equals 0. Well, this term becomes 0, and this one becomes 0. So let's think about sine of 0, which also happens to be 0. So this is all I have to work with. Now I want to reduce. Let's start by canceling a pi out of everything. Now let's try to take a nine out. So 45 divided by nine gives me five. And 27 divided by nine gives me three. So I have m times three plus five fourths. Let's make a common denominator. So 5 fourths plus 12 fourths. And I get 17 m over 4 as the moment of inertia for this cylinder when it's rotated about the y-axis. 